The first scripture lesson this morning comes from 1 Thessalonians, the fourth chapter, verses 13 through 18. And that can be found on page 204 in the New Testament. But we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive who are left until the coming of the Lord, will by no means precede those who have died. For the Lord himself, with the cry of command, with the archangel's call, and with the sound of God's trumpet, will descend from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Our Gospel reading this morning comes from Matthew 25, verses 1 through 13. It's Matthew 25, verses 1 through 13. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a shout, Look, here he come, here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all the bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourself. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with him to the wedding banquet. And the door was shut. Later the other bridesmaids came, also saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. For the word of God in Scripture, for the word of God among us, and for the word of God within us. Thanks be to God. So this Scripture has many meanings on many different levels. Um, a lot of it points towards being ready and always being ready, no matter what. But then you also have that part of being, you know, I, the have and the have-nots. The haves have everything that they need, and when someone that doesn't have quite enough asks for help, they say, nope, because then I don't have enough. So then those, those people that don't have have to go out and find it. Um, this, this scripture also teaches the, the, the importance of waiting and being patient. You know, you know, we are in some crazy time right now in this world. And I know that there are days that I wake up and go, God, could you make it today? Really, could you just be done? And in that little voice in my head, you just hear, be patient. I was not born with patience. It took a long time and I still don't have them. So I want it now. <laughs> but it's that simple voice that just says, be patient, but be ready. The scripture, the way it's written makes it sound like that, you know, the people that have everything together and have their lives together, that when Christ comes, they're going to be the only ones that get to go. And the ones that aren't quite got it together are going to be left standing on the outside as usual saying, can we please come in? But that's not the way I take it. I take that the scripture is, is that, you know, some people, yes, they have everything they possibly need. 
But to me, the scripture also says that just because you have everything doesn't mean you're not supposed to share what you have. Or if you don't have a lot, that doesn't mean you're not supposed to share with someone else who has less than you. There is no given when Christ comes. There is no, he's going to say, this group of people is all I'm taking and the rest of you, you're done. That is not the way it works. You know, he came here and he died and he rose again for all of us. And all we have to do is accept that and accept him into our lives. And to show kindness for other people, people who don't have even what we, even less than what we have. And show kindness to the people that have more than they need. <laughs> even though that's hard sometimes. But he didn't make that distinction. You know, this, this parable, the way, it, the way it's written, I find, you know, I would find it to be sort of confusing had I, you know, if you didn't read it before and actually stop and think about it. It's saying, oh, okay, all you rich people that got it all together, when I come back, you know, that's just the way I think it reads. Um, it also is the ones that had to go get more so that they would have enough light to keep their lamps lit, lost out. So does that mean if like for two seconds we step out the door to do something and he comes that we lose out on the eternity that we have been promised? I personally, I personally am not okay with that. <laughs> I don't believe that that's the way he works. After all everything he went through, I don't think that he would just go, time's ticking, and leave. You know, I, I just, I can't think that way. And that could be me, but in this scripture, or in this parable, it also talks about how the, the bridegroom was delayed. And in that time, sometimes the bridegroom did get delayed on his way to the bride's house to get her. Whether it was to fight over the dowry because things weren't, you know, he, things changed and he wanted this or they wanted that. Or for whatever reason, he got delayed. So they were to keep oil for their lamps so that the house would be lit and the path would be lit. And really would it have killed those wise bridesmaids to have shared just a little bit of the oil that they had left? They had enough to light their one there if they saw the bridegroom coming. They could have very easily given to the ones who couldn't and didn't have. And again, it's the haves and the have-nots. And the haves say, well, this is all mine, and I'm not sharing it, no matter what. Yes, we have plenty of light, but I, it, it might go out, and I can't, I can't take that chance. When the goal at hand was right there. And to be able to, to hit, to be able to go with Jesus and go to that kingdom that we've been promised, it's not about collecting things, or at least material things. It's about discipling and witnessing people to people and letting them know of the kingdom of God. It's not just to collect our stuff because you can't take all that with you. So it doesn't matter what you say. It talks about helping the poor and the widows, the people on the outside margins of society, by showing kindness to others. Not by just selfishly holding on to everything you have and not helping someone else with what you got. You didn't get that by yourself. God gave you the ability to be smart enough to go to college and get a degree that helped you do that or gave you the brain that came up with the idea. You didn't just walk, up, walk out one day and go, oh, I think I'll be a surgeon. <laughs> it just doesn't happen that way. So everything you have belongs to God anyway. It's not yours to keep.
So the question I ask today is, are we being proper bridesmaids waiting on our bridegroom? Are we sharing that love with others? Are we holding that light, not only under a bushel, but to ourselves so that no one else gets a chance to see it or be near it? Because if that's what we're doing, we're doing it all wrong. That, that light that he gives us is meant for us to share with everyone and not hide it under a bushel. And the question too would be, are you, how, how are you ready for when Christ comes? Since we don't know when he's coming, it's not like we can have a checklist and go, okay, I did that, and today I helped the poor, and today I, we don't know. So we have no way of knowing that it's not going to be tomorrow or later today. Sometimes we can hope it would be those days. But by being ready for him to come simply means, are we doing what he tasks us to do? And taking his gospel and his love out to everyone and let them know that there is a better way. There's someone out there that loves them no matter who they are, where they are, what color they are, what gender they are. As far as he's concerned, they have probably purple polka dots and antennas. He would love them anyway because we were all created and he loved every one of us. So our job and our task that he gives us is not to hide and, and, and be selfish with that lamp oil. It's to take it out and spread it around so that others may light their lamps so that they can see the way when Christ comes. Amen.